So we're gonna watch some movies today. Um, we've picked these ahead of time, but Wizard is not going to see them. So, what is Russian um, Terminator about? A uh, program to kill, not afraid to die. The Russian Terminator ellipsis. Uh, <laughs> it just trails off like that. A ruthless, <laughs> <laughs> a ruthless underground weapons and drug organization is out to undermine the growing relations between East and West. Their plan is to extort the necessary information from a powerful Western government official by kidnapping his daughter's fiance. A former FBI agent recruited by the West to wipe out the terrorists and foil their plan. Ellipsis. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that in here. I but, guess. The, but the KGB has its own strategy for crushing this conspiracy. A mysterious one man death squad known only as the Russian Terminator. Uh, the body count rises quickly as these two warriors race against time and each other in this explosive action adventure. I bet. She's got Betty Davis Russian Terminators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I think maybe the title was changed. Because these all look like actual titles on the film, and that yeah. was like superimposed was on a freeze frame. Yeah. No. We don't have to know what's going on in the scene to show people shooting. It's acceptable so far. <laughs> it's exciting for a crappy movie. Sure. It's a really good job there. Yeah. So many it's a lot of henchmen, though. There's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> That's so they can use the same three actors over and over. Uh... So the movie should really be called Russian Ninja. Oh. Hey, why did you do that? You can't hit me at point blank range, you're so slow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> now. Uh, we got the uh, Ninja Vengeance. Uh, you can't fight the evil forces of power without the power of force. What? The ancient art of the ninja, the invisible assassins of Imperial Japan, uh, <laughs> is revived by a lone warrior determined to see justice in a small southern town. <laughs> Traveling from California to Houston, oh good. <laughs> a martial arts expert suffers a motorcycle breakdown in a small Texas town, but his bad luck proves to be a blessing in disguise for the local townspeople when he discovers the corrupt sheriff and his KKK cronies beating a young black student to death. Wasn't this the plot of Doc Hollywood? Oh my god. Real life martial art experts ignite this hard hitting action adventure as the fearless disciple gives America a lesson in ninjitude. What? It does not say that! Ninjitude. Don't get mad, get vengeance. <laughs> a film. Was this a trailer again or is this no, a movie? This looks like a movie. It should have some music or something. There you go. Oh. He's got optical illusion here with the gray bars. Like the fathers of your <laughs> grandfathers, it is your destiny to become a ninja. <laughs> oh, look at that composition. Oh, wow. You can see both of them, thanks to Mirror. Oh. That's impressive. Then <laughs> in the next shot, the cameraman's in the game. <laughs> I went through it. My teacher went through it. It's a part of the training. Yeah. <laughs> This in and of itself, the, the, as the title you'll see here, Never Too Young to Die. Eh, okay, but then you flip over and you see who's actually in the film, and you will see John Stamos, Vanity, and also listed Gene Simmons. Yeah. I just got way more excited. Who is Vanity? Uh, Vanity? Um, she's is. a prince protege. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's, oh, she's like, oh man, this yeah. is like the perfect movie. Though. Yeah, but I just flipped over and saw how Gene Simmons looks in this movie. Yeah, yeah. The oh. note that came attached with this said he plays a transsexual villain. Yeah. So. Yeah, Gene Simmons is wearing makeup and eyeshadow. <laughs> oh boy. All right. All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> now, first off, there is a, there is a poll quote right on the top. Explosions, one against a hundred bazooka battles and chases. That sounds fucking awesome. Vanity, the new breed of Temptress. Stamos, the new breed of hero. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna actually read the back of this now. Alright. Uh, pass the poll quote. Action, Bond style. Beauty, Vanity style. Hero, American style. <laughs> wow, that's, that's profound. Every, this movie has everything working for it. I know. Never Too Young to Die stars teenage idol John Stamos. 
an essentially exotic vanity as two of the most dynamic secret agents seen in years. Gene Simmons plays the supervillain, no shit, who plans to take over the country, no shit, and finds his plot blocked by Stamos and Vanity. We, we're done. We don't have to watch the movie, that's it. The two suddenly find themselves the targets of the vicious Simmons and must take on the maniacal hermaphrodite. Oh, a hermaphrodite, not yep. even, okay. Uh -huh. This just keeps maniacal. getting, maniacal this just keeps getting better. I know. Okay, uh, powerful heavy metal music, state, Ooh. yeah. State-of-the-art weaponry and the explosive chemistry between two of the sexiest stars on the screen blend to make this exciting action flick an automatic winner. I cannot wait. Even they know! Really? Next time, sweetheart, be careful who you choose as your lover. <laughs> Do you use killer with a finger? I think so. I want Star Yeah, it's like a sharp finger now. Meanwhile, in college. <laughs> <laughs> no, jeez. That was the best one. <laughs> Excellent choice. <laughs> Excellent choice, actor. Uh, yeah, that was the best take there. <laughs> So let's try and decipher Russian Terminator. Wizard, what do you think the plot was? Papers. Papers? Papers. Somebody wanted the papers and somebody else needed the papers and somebody else stole the papers, but then the one guy had the papers. Papers. But then they kidnapped the girl because they thought she had the papers, but she didn't have the papers. Papers. Uh, and then it was her father who was kidnapping and having the papers all along, and they were his papers. They knew where the papers were the whole time, though. They were yeah. in the factory. This is the paper they want. Okay, what do we do now? But there was one paper that was in a different drawer in a different part of the factory. But the thing is, is she wasn't even really kidnapped. It was her boyfriend who was kidnapped. And then she had to give them the papers, but then there was a paper missing from the papers. Yeah. And her father knew that. And he was paying Kenny Rogers $200,000 to... To... Never really get, clear to what... To, Get he was the doing papers. I think he was supposed to get the papers, and he was supposed to get the papers. But he, no. but the dad knew that there was a paper missing. And, and we then... didn't even talk. We haven't even talked about Phil Davis at all. Phil well, Davis is the 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 younger version of Kenny Rogers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Phil Davis kind of epitomizes the whole movie because where did we decide this movie was made? Where did we figure? Oh, it's, it's Scandinavia it's, yeah, somewhere. Some Scandinavian country. Yeah. So there's it's, there's lots of Larses and. Yeah, yeah and but they're the, all speaking English, and it becomes clear as you're watching it that this is a movie made. Uh, by Scandinavians mm -hmm. that's meant to be an American action movie yeah. about a Russian Terminator. And Phil Davis, uh, maybe it's the case with the other actors, but it's definitely clear with him that he learned his lines phonetically. Yeah. And English is not a language he's very familiar with. No. no. It's, like, it's like the old man from uh, Temple of Doom. On the way to Delhi, you will stop at Bangkok. Uh, the oh, the, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. You will go to Bangkok Palace. Uh, where he's just literally reading sounds, yeah. and he has no idea what the fuck he's saying. That's, yeah. that's how every actor in this sounds like. What do you want from me? I'm busy. I don't understand what you're talking about. This girl, does she has a name? Probably. Yeah, that's how, that's how you end up where people are, are putting inflections on the wrong words. Yes, wow. and it sounds which wrong. Which creates the best line yeah. in the movie. Oh, yes, which is? Go ahead, Jay. Is You've it? earned it. And that's what friends are for. So you help me? That's what friends are for. It's obvious, though, that once this movie was completed, someone had to either market it or try and sell it. And the movie has nothing to do with the Russian Terminator. He's, he's a there, minor character. He's like the Boba Fett. Well, he's not even a Terminator, no a Terminator, though. Russian he's a ninja. He's the Russian ninja. The that movie, they, call, they do call him at one point the Russian... Ninja. The movie should have been called they Russian call Ninja. They just say Russian Ninja. They yeah. do call him the Russian Ninja. I wonder if that was the original title that they changed to, to capitalize on the Terminator I guess name. Russian Ninja's not a very good title either. No. But, but he's such a minor character. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's the thing that kind of ties all the betrayals and double crosses all together, but it's not a movie about the Russian Terminator. He's just a character in it. So they say, well, what, what's this movie? Yeah. Yeah. Old, old Kenny Rogers in a beard walks around? Yeah. Or Russian Terminator? Which title do you go with? <laughs>
Oh, I would walks watch around. Kenny Rogers walks, walks around, around looking bored. But he barges into the Sybaris pool suites and starts, <laughs> and starts beating the shit out of a guy. That's some of the highlights of the movie when it's cutting back and forth between those two, oh. having their, their banter. Yeah. We both fucked up. What the hell is this? I've seen one of those before. <laughs> I've seen one of those before. I'm gonna make a soundboard just for that guy. Yeah. Yeah? Who is this? It's Phil Davis. Phil oh, Davis. his name is Phil! <laughs> Fuck you! This just Davis. made the movie! I am normal American man! <laughs> Phil Davis! Did we ever find out why they go to the Sybaris pool suites? Like the, the right scene after the, the scene the before, the, yeah, there, there's a failed uh, robbery. Or no, that's that's where she takes the papers, she takes, yeah, and then they're like, "That's these, these are not enough papers. We need more papers to paper." And then, <laughs> right? and then, uh, then immediately right after she, she leaves and gets in the car, and Phil Davis tells her the story about how he got attacked by the Russian ninja. It's like, guess what happened to me? This crazy guy, and then they are swimming. Yeah. Well. Do you know what happened to me? Some goddamn asshole dressed in black attacked me. Yeah, everybody moves very slow in this yeah, movie. Particularly the ninja. Yes. Oh. Yeah. oh no. Oh no, be careful, Kenny Rogers. I'm still gonna look like. <laughs> 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 that was a great punch right there. Did you see that? Just. <laughs> oh no, he's confused. <laughs> you bastard. There was the there was the slow ninja fight scene um, at Kenny Rogers' house um, where him and his right, husband. Right right at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, where him and his husband. Yeah, live. where they live. <laughs> hey, his wife was beautiful. How do you look like <laughs> David <laughs> Coverdall? Well, the, the other movie is the one with Gene Simmons and Drag, right? <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about his sweatshirt. I, that, I'm gonna make it my life's goal to find that sweatshirt. Describe the sweatshirt for the audience, Jay. The, well, the sweatshirt has planes on it. Like fighter jets. Like fighter jets, randomly, and then there's like little patterns behind it. You know, it's one of those shirts, like I have a, I have a friend that lives in Korea, and he'll, when he comes back to visit, he'll bring a shirt that he bought in Korea, and it'll just have random American words on it oh, and yes. images. Huh? Yep. That's what that shirt felt like. Like they had a shirt that looked like, this is American shirt. <laughs> it's got planes and words that are in English. That's what it felt like. <laughs> what? So obvious the creators of Russian Terminator wanted to make an American style action movie. They threw in all sorts of elements that didn't make any sense and <laughs> slapped the movie together. I, I get the impression that they didn't speak English but they watched a lot of American action movies and then tried to write something in, in the best English they could that would replicate an American action movie. Yeah. And that's why it comes across so confusing but, but because they because, don't understand what's happening in their own movie. Just because you're foreign and you're trying to write in a different language doesn't uh, make up for the lack of complete logic, <laughs> though, you know? What? Yeah, what, what like, was up right. with that? The Russian ninja. He, <laughs> He slowly got away. He pulled the guy out of the helicopter and he yeah. awkwardly fell on the floor. It looks like they really filmed that though, without yeah. any stunt work or no, cables sure, or anything. Yeah. They just like, hover the helicopter, I'll just climb up on it. Mm -hmm. did. Someone yeah. might get hurt, I don't know. Uh, it really looks like that, so I was like, hey, neat. You have a problem. You're gonna die. Oh yeah, yeah, that's oh, the catchphrase, yeah. the action catchphrase. You got the problem. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's the consensus on Russian Terminator? Uh, good, bad, bad, bad? Is it? Is it? It's it's riding that line between frustrating bad and good bad. There's parts of it that are really funny. Yeah. I think it's just above it due to. There was enough you could puzzle through for fun and, you know, sort of make up. Yeah. You know, it was like trying to actually sew the parts together was fun. Whereas in a lot of movies that might just be, I don't give a shit, just yeah, get the up. papers and whatever. But no, it was like, oh, who's that? What are they doing? Why are they doing that? Wait a minute, what did he just say? And... Where's everybody going? Where's everybody walking? Yeah. Where is everybody in relation to everyone? Yeah. Sometimes I, I have yeah. complete 
bizarre confusion can be fun, yeah. Yeah. especially when two main characters just show up in a swimming pool for yeah. no reason. Yeah. You are my enemy. You have seen my face, so you have to die. Oh, yeah? So our second film, which also had a ninja in it, is called Ninja Vengeance. Yes. Um, which is categorized under L. Yeah. Uh, for something. For uh, love. Lo a love story, maybe? It's there a is love a love story. story. A love story. Yeah. But, but there's also, like Russian Terminator, which is Russian Ninja, this is Ninja Vengeance, but there is no ninja in it. Well, he is a ninja, but he's never wearing a ninja outfit. He, yes. He just talks about the fact that he's, he's a ninja. He's not like a movie ninja, like, I'm a ninja, and he's I'm a, stealthy. The like ninja. He's a terrible ninja. But that would be a good title for the movie. The worst, the worst ninja. ninja. Yeah. He's going to be a ninja now. It's ninja time. He's ninja. got a ninja book. He's got his ninja book. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his ninja book. <laughs> It's a ninja his, for his, dummies. His ninja whip and his ninja <laughs> oh. claves and... Well, let's talk about the, the story of this movie. It's the exact opposite of Russian Terminator, where you can always follow what's going on because so little is going it's on. Easy to it's follow. It's too easy to follow. This, this ninja, uh, he's traveling through town because he's on his way to a ninja he's convention. Going, he's, going, he's going to the ninja convention in Houston. In Houston. His motorcycle breaks down in a small town where everybody is racist. The KKK rules the town. All the cops are racist. <laughs> Don't y'all usually lay around around noonish? <laughs> what? Oh, you being racist? <laughs> Run out of dogma to theorize on. What? Dog theory? I got this. Oh my god! Oh. So yeah, and then the the black kid gets killed, and the ninja gets. Not framed for it. They, they didn't intend to kill the black kid. It was sort of accidental. Yeah. They were all shocked that he got killed. They just meant to rough him up. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, they needed a, someone to blame. So why not blame the new guy passing through town who has a, a suitcase filled with weapons? Yes. John Tesh Ninja escapes from prison. We don't really see how. Yeah. You see, oh, he got out of his cell. Shit. Yeah, he yeah, didn't do anything no clever, clever no clever yeah. ninja thing. He just got out. They have a little surveillance yeah. uh, camera feed going on one of the TVs, and it's like this big, and you see it in the background, and he's just like, eh, and walking out, and then sure. that's it. Yeah. So then we have to sit through five more hours. The movie goes on for another five hours of them just wandering around the woods, yeah. running away from the, the rednecks. He and, and, and Sam. Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer, <laughs> Muppet Cow Lady. Uh, <laughs> well, why why is why are we calling her Muppet Cow Lady? Well, number one, she she got the cow nickname because uh, apparently he feels that she sounds like a cow. I think you could sound a little less like a cow. And then she makes more cow noises. But the Muppet part is that every time she's moving at any sort of speed, her arms just sort of start flailing. It's, they go out and yeah. it just like even right at the beginning, she like at the very first scene, she's jogging and she's just kind of like got this weird sort of gait. It's like people don't jog like that. I don't. Is that a thing? But then she's running through the woods and just <laughs> and just as soon as we noticed it, it never stopped. By, by the way, who are these people? I don't know. I think it's two guys. It looks like it's two guys in a loving embrace, like which dudes. doesn't happen in the movie. Oh, I wish it did. So is the rest of the movie no. just going to be? The rednecks have to get him. I yes. Ugh. At no point did he really do ninja anything apart from uh, teach the girl how to meditate in like 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Well, and then he sort of fights. And then there's flashbacks to, you know, him learning. Yeah, but the thing is, he's not doing anything that's like ninja. It's like he's really, it's, it looks like wrestling moves. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's the big problem is that first scene when he, when he finds them trying to lynch the black kid, he, there, he gets overpowered. There's so many rednecks there. Yeah. And then that's a good scene where it's like, okay, he, he gets beaten up sure. and loses. Ah, oh, God, my hand! He broke my oh, hand! Shit. But then he's got to, like, when those two rednecks at the gas station come after him, I don't remember what happened, but, yeah, he's, like, like throwing just... Uh, yeah, and they're yeah. falling down and, and he gets beat game. up and he, he, he should then turn turn the ninja up and start like doing really awesome things and like oh he killed these two guys he killed our other two guys this ninja is really you know like yeah. there's none of that he's just he's just like a well, like a dumbass <laughs> <laughs> 
the ultimate irony is that at the end of the movie, what saves the day is the girl showing up and just murdering someone with a shotgun. Yeah. Oh my oh! god! That was a nice squib. Yeah. yeah. He's a terrible ninja! <laughs> a correct ending would have been him subduing him with ninja-ness yeah. and then making him account for his crime and that sort of thing, but it, instead he does get shot with a gun. Well, he never, the ninja never kills anyone. No. He but, but the basically ending, manages to trick other people into killing people. Basically. <laughs> that's, well, that's the way his... of the ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, to me, the biggest problem was you have a movie with a character that's a ninja that has apparently achieved ninja status due to backstories with he, his trainer. He received a black belt in something. Yes, but uh, I would have enjoyed, and, and, and he, he shows no signs of actually any competence competency yeah. in being a ninja. I would have preferred a movie called Somewhat Competent Yellow Belt. You know, because that's kind of what he was. <laughs> and yellow belt he just is. happens to be a guy on his way to a karate convention and he's a yellow belt. He just started and he gets caught up in this whole thing. And he, he's and, in and over his head. He's in over his head and he sure. learns he learns how to fight back and all these things and he becomes a, you know, maybe he, he uh, you know, he, he grows as a character. But when you start maybe, him off yeah. as a ninja yeah. and then he is nowhere near a ninja, it's yeah. just terrible. Either have him kick tons of ass and be awesome, or have him be uh, uh, underdog yeah. and, and work his way up. I would say everything we're saying about this movie makes it sound more interesting than it really is. Yeah, guess what, the don't fact, watch it. The fact of the matter is this movie was awful and boring yeah. and horrible to sit through. So this movie, Ninja Vengeance, I think uh, we'll get the ax later. Yeah, I think um, we need to crush this. We need to put it out of its misery. Erase it from existence. Yeah, we need to get vengeance on this movie. Oh, I get it. <laughs> so, what was the third film we watched? Oh, we were so excited about this Never was, Too Young to Die. This was the biggest disappointment because it was the one I had the most hopes for. Okay, Stargrove, let's see that new routine. Come on. All right, more left now. More left. I mean, look at it. Just look at it. Well, this movie had everything working for it, but it's one of those ones that's more fun uh, in concept than it is in execution. Yeah, that's true. And unfortunately, someone somewhere paid $4 for it. Ooh, that's too much. But this is Never Too Young to Die, starring John Stamos, Vanity, and Gene Simmons, a, a, an all-star cast. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're, they were trying to make a James Bond, a young James Bond, some some sort of spin-off. A, a, a James or, Bond type film that would appeal to a younger audience. Yeah, yeah. The, the, Much like, as you astutely pointed out, Richard Grieco. Yeah, that Richard Grieco movie with yeah. the, uh, I already forgot the name of if it again. If Looks Could Kill. If Looks Could Kill. Now I know it. Well, this is a case of somebody uh, in, in the studio system, some executive saying, who's hot right now? Oh, John Stamos. Vanity. Let's get all these people in a movie. Uh, uh, what is popular right now in movies? Oh, but Mad Max and post-apocalypse movies are oh, popular yeah. too. So our villains will inexplicably be Mad Max villains, even though it doesn't make any sense. But the thing is, is it seems post-apocalyptic, but it's not. It's not. They just look that way. Present day yeah. 86 right. and... Right at the beginning, they're starting off with like scenes with with Gene Simmons and he's, you know, he's, he's leading this you know, broken down amphitheater full of freaks. And it's like, oh, it's gonna be post-apocalyptic. And then they just cut to John Stamos doing gymnastics. There's a potential right there that it could have gone really campy, yeah. which could have been really fun. I think that's the problem is that it doesn't, I don't know what they were going for. I yeah. think it, it, it was where... taking itself too seriously. Yeah, there are times where it was, Getting campy, especially basically any time Gene Simmons was on screen. Yeah, yeah. This movie, and this is a sentence I never thought I'd say in my life, but this movie lights up when Gene Simmons is on screen. I love it! <laughs> I think he had a different idea as to what the movie was, yeah. opposed to everyone else in the film. Yep. And so that he, he plays it up a little bit more than the other characters. Well, and... he, he was a, a hermaphrodite 
transsexual psychopath. But well, that's he has little yeah, things you can that he would that. do. <laughs> yeah, you can totally underplay that. You can totally underplay that, and, and Gene Simmons just goes right for that scenery and yeah. just yeah, yeah. chomping on it. Surprise! <laughs> no, that's the thing. Like it, that feels like a, a, a vestige of like a, a super campy Bond parody yeah. that got rewritten and rewritten and rewritten for John Stamos, and like yeah. now it's. You know, kind of cuddly and family friendly, even though there's a lot of vanity nipples. Yeah, yeah. In there, it's like, but it, it sort of play, it, you take some of the violence and the sex out, and it really sort of plays that way. It plays like a yeah. Disney movie. Kind of, kind of goofy, kind of something you'd see on like a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, like it's WGN's, you know, you know, movie of the week. Yeah, something along those lines. You know, it's it's wacky, <laughs> but it's never wacky enough. No. Like, when Gene Simmons isn't on the screen. Yeah. You know, rolling his eyes back in his head and sticking his tongue out. God, I love that. <laughs> A big thing to mention too. It's not just our our. I mean, it's obvious when you look at the cover, but it's not just our theory that they're going for a Bond. Re, oh. redo, oh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, George Lazenby is in it as as his father. Yeah. So it's obvious a passing of the torch from old Bond to new young hip Bond. But the elements are all there. There's, yeah, new young hip Bond. There's a Q character to give him some gadgets. There's the Bond girl. It, it, it's obviously a, 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 a pathetic copycat movie. Yes. The, where, when, when people plug in all their ideas into a thing where this will be a sure bet. Yeah. We'll have this, we'll have this. We'll, that's when it blows it's a, up. It's a failed marketing attempt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's pretty much all it is. It's when, you, when you've taken like, I mean, John Stamos, generally speaking, is a fairly charming actor. Like he's, that's what he's got going for him. And he just, I didn't give a shit about, you know, like I, I was initially excited that it was going to be like, oh, it's going to be John Stamos. It's going to be like, you know, he's going to be all Stamos and whatever. But. He's just kind of there. He didn't yeah. go full Stamos. No. no. That was an amazing scene, though. The the, the sexual tension slash comedy scene. Oh, that's where I, I thought it was turning into a Naked Gun movie, yeah. where it gets yeah, yeah, yeah it keeps escalating in a was, uh, comedic fashion, yeah, which yeah. I don't think was intentional. He keep they keep cutting back to him, cutting back to her, and he's like, yeah, oh, woo, woo, woo. and then <laughs> cut back to her, and she's like, Ooh. <laughs> and then the one, then she's like, she's in like laying out, putting oil all over herself. Then the yeah. next scene, she's pouring a hose on herself. <laughs> and, he keeps going in and out of the door, and then he's eating an apple. Oh yeah, he's obsessed with eating fruit. Oh, yes. Like yeah. that's gonna uh, suppress his his yeah. Uh, yeah. urges or something. But then after after all tension. that, after all that sexual tension and all that, they just have sex. They just have sex. Let's talk about the use of bad dummies. Mm. Oh yeah, that's, that's one thing that's really going. That's really parts. great. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm in. I, if, if I wasn't the editor I'm saw in. that and said, you know what, let's just leave it in. Oh yeah, <laughs> put that in the movie. <laughs> There's nothing better than a bad dummy. Yes. The, the best bad dummy, though, by far, is in the movie The Fugitive with Harrison Ford. In the behind the scenes of The Fugitive, they're talking about the state-of-the-art dummy that they're going to throw off the waterfall. No. You know when he's in the pipe? Yeah. At the, and they're like, well, this dummy costs us $50,000. It's fully articulated. And then they cut to the scene. And the dummy falls, and it's just all <laughs> dummy bones, and, and it's it's hysterical. So the dummies in uh, in Never Too Young to Die definitely fall on the uh, bad dummy uh, uh, scale side of the spectrum, mm -hmm. but creatively used used in two different ways because there are two different dummies, mm -hmm. one of which is thrown down kind of a kind of a shaft and then falls onto some railings. <laughs> But cl clearly, and Mike pointed this out when we were watching it, very clearly the editor was just like, yeah, I'm leaving that in, that's hilarious. <laughs> and then, spoilers, at the end of this stupid ass movie, <laughs> uh, G Gene Simmons gets thrown off the fucking Hoover Dam, whatever dam it is. And so you're watching a, a, a dummy with, you know, which is, you know, the tallest dummy you've ever seen in your life, dressed in the you know, get up the... Kind of drag. It's a sort yeah. of drag, yeah, with like giant hair, and it's just like, and you're just sort of watching it just tumble, and it's like... And it's banging. It's amazing, and it's yeah, running and stuff. I'm and surprised it's not falling bouncing. apart. Yeah. yeah. That's where I think of like the prop department, because they're not, they have no emotional investment in the story or the movie. They're just yeah. like dressing up this dummy and thinking like, what are we doing?
<laughs> but I have a feeling that, that the director and every single member of the crew did not care about this project I, whatsoever. I don't think so. No. I, I, I get the distinct impression after watching the film yeah. that that's the case. Go ahead, add it to your collection of gadgets. Thank you, sir. You're gonna be sick because nobody's coming back here tonight. Um, one thing that is really disappointing that I feel kind of lied to about is yeah. on the back here, there were explosions uh -huh. and there were chases, sure. but there was no one against a hundred bazooka battles. What is, is that even English? No. So is it a hundred people with one bazooka or? This is a or is it from one the, person? Or well, a person against a hundred bazookas? Well, hundred bazookas. It doesn't matter because there were no bazookas in the there movie. There was not even a one there bazooka. There was one bazooka. No, there was like, and well, this, I, I am kind of pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he really hates helmets! And there were no chases. Uh, yeah, there were chases, chases, yeah. Remember when Vanity the goes, goes Griswold? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She and goes, goes no full reason. Griswold. So, yeah. Full Griswold. <laughs> for See, no reason at all. It's not okay to go full Stamos, but it is okay to go full Griswold. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And Ragnar! <laughs> you know, I slept on this. I thought about it long and hard. Yeah. And my vote for the best movie out of the three is Russian Terminator. I'm as far as entertainment you. value goes, as far as uh, uh, audience participation goes, of constantly yelling questions and being engaged, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had more fun watching this than I did you know, Never to End to Die, which is really disappointing because I had high hopes for Stamos. Yeah. I was more entertained by Never to Young to Die. Oh, true, true. Uh -oh. We gotta... I was, I was because there, there was this, there is music. There, there. You know, I actually, I actually cared about, I actually cared about like the Samos character in the beginning, where you know he has a rocky relationship with his father and stuff like that. So Jesse, your vote is for Never Too Young to Die. Josh, Russian Terminator. Are we going on funny bad or? like not a bad movie. I think we're going on I, funny bad. I was going on most entertaining. Yeah. Literally kind of literally I was more entertained by the time spent <laughs> whether good whether you know positively or negatively. Yeah. I was more I mean it's not like it was fucking ninja vengeance because fuck you. Uh, I I'm I, I'll probably I want to say never too young to die because it was a little more creative there it was better made. I understood what was happening, but Russian Terminator is a funner watch because it doesn't feel like a piece of marketing schlock that, that a studio put together. Yeah. It felt like just an a incompetently bad movie that's fun to watch and fun to yell things mm -hmm. at. So if we're going for that angle, I'm gonna have to say Russian Terminator. Jay, what are we doing? We're gonna drop a cinder block off the top of this ladder onto Ninja Vengeance. Uh, the reason being that Ninja Vengeance exists. Holy shit! Uh, it did more damage to the cinder block. <laughs> 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 <laughs>